Howdy folks, Nathan Adlin here with the Fast Lane Car and I am in Decano, Colorado at IMI Raceway. This is the track we use all the time for evaluating cars and this is the ultimate car to put on this track because it is so much fun to drive. What you're looking at is a 2014 Mini Cooper S and we're going to do a 0-60 to 60 and full track run and that's coming up next. Minis are always cute and adorable, and some of them are getting a little bulbous, but with the regular base model Mini, the Cooper, well, they've kept most things really tidy and fairly small. With that being said, almost every dimension is larger. The wheelbase is larger by over an inch. It's over an inch higher. It's wider. Altogether, a larger car and a slightly heavier car. With all that put aside, there is one thing that really stands out with me, at least, and that's these. See this little... <laughs> little LED section right there. It makes the eyes look like fish eyes. And that to me kind of takes away from the cuteness of it. No big deal. It's just something that I think they kind of went the wrong direction with. And you know why? Because at an angle, it looks a lot like the Fiat 500L's headlights. And that's a problem. This is a very interesting engine, I'll tell you why. Because it is a 189 horsepower, 207 pound-feet of torque, little tiny, two liter, twin-powered, turbocharged, four-cylinder engine. And it's hooked up to a six-speed automatic transmission going to the front wheels. But here's the cool part. Those components, none of them were built in the same country. Would you believe the transmission was actually built in Japan? It is truly an international car. Give it some juice and boom. But 6.74. Now remember, for those of you who are screaming and yelling after reading your various magazines, that that is slower than what various magazines say and what it says at the Mini USA website, you're right. That's because we're over a mile above sea level and the turbocharger only compensates for a certain amount of horsepower that's lost at high altitude. Leaving the traction control on. Come on. And away we go. I'm letting the transmission and the traction control do all the work. I'm just going to try to push it kind of hard. Come on, baby. There you go. <laughs> it's a fun car. You know, I'm not a big fan of automatic transmissions. You guys all know that. Even less of a fan of CVTs. But, in this car, this is probably one of the best transmissions I've ever sampled in a front-wheel drive car. When I mean best transmissions, I of course mean best automatic transmissions. Come on, baby. Despite my horrible driving, I think traction control on is probably the safest way to do this car. <laughs> Good brakes, I was going about 70. Folks, 
there's two different camps on the design of the new interior on this new Mini. One is that it's a little too mature and perhaps a little bit sober compared to the last one. The other one is, well, the materials are great, the build quality is better, and altogether it is an easier interior to use. And I'm right in the middle on those two. I think it's a very comfortable place to be. It's very functional, with the exception of all the toggle switches near the bottom where you'd have your coffee cup. Otherwise, the infotainment system works great. It basically has a version of BMW's iDrive, which works fantastic as well. And I really like the way they bolster the front seats. So that's all great. Very tight in the back. What do you expect? It's a mini. And also the infotainment system has this ring that goes around it that's multicolored, and it might be distracting to some of you. All right, dude, here's your time. Check it out. Yeah, I blew two seconds in that corner I overcooked That's over there. That's what I said. I figured you missed a corner. Yeah, I, I just went way, way wide. But you know why? One of the reasons is because this thing is so tidy yeah. that I was expecting it to go further, so I kind of let it do it, and it didn't need to. It could have easily made it around there faster. Yeah, let's face it. Front-wheel drive, while it's fast, rear-wheel drive, just so much better on a racetrack. Yeah, sure, but this car is still a lot of fun. And for anybody who just you know doesn't want to be a professional, this is the right car to own because it, it gets you around the track quick. I think 114 is a great time. Good job. Yeah, thank you. All right, Nathan, we've had it on the track. We've had it up Loveland Pass. Yeah. So on the TFL scale of buy it, lease it, buy it. it. Buy it, buy it, just buy the damn car. You know why? You know why? Because even with the automatic transmission, it's a hoot. It's a car that makes you smile. Yes, you cannot fit human beings in the back seat, and it is small, and it is very expensive. And these little fisheye headlights, I'm not a big fan of them. But as a driver, as a car that makes you feel good when you're driving it, it is one of the best for the money. Fantastic car. All right, I'm gonna give it a mixed review. At $37,000, I'm gonna say lease it because there are a lot of cars you can buy for that that are as good, if not better. But if you go get the base version, you know, the one that starts in the 20s, go for that one, buy that one. As always, this is Nathan. And Roman saying thanks for watching and check out tflcar.com for more news, views, and real world reviews. Ciao.